Where we live, it never snows, and this is how it looks today. I'm also in our cellar videoing this just because it's the only place I had to do it on this day. So this piece that I'm showing y'all right now is a cloche that I got on one of my thrift hauls. And we will be flipping it today by making a base for it out of a piece of scrap wood. Okay, so what I have right here is just a scrap piece of wood. And I'm showing you that I traced it out to where it's just slightly bigger than where the cloche is going to set. Um, so we will be making a base out of this scrap piece of wood. And I'm going to get my handy dandy little jigsaw here and I'm going to cut out this circle and that's going to be the start of our base. After I cut it out, I'll sand down the edges, kind of sand, um, because I don't want it to be this, you know, straight edge. So I'm going to do some things to make it look the way I want it to. And I'm going to sand the top and the bottom just to smooth them out. Okay, I'm showing you that I finished the <laughs> piece and um it is in good shape i really do like it and here i almost dropped to the base but it's all good so right now i'm going to take it inside and clean it up and get it to where it needs to be for staining so here i am using american walnut to get this piece stained i'm just using a chip brush and american walnut and i'm putting on a layer and then just wiping a little bit off and going until I get the desired look I want. Okay, just try not to get that on my sleeves. I'm gonna go back around and do some more. Alrighty, there it is. I love it. So now I just gotta let it dry by putting my hands all over it. And then after it dries, we're going to put the cloche on it and decorate it. Okay, so on this project, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm taking these books and I'm just gonna be giving them a new look. So the first thing that we're gonna do, and when you do it, you wanna to try to find books that are similar in color, and even like shape. You can do different sizes, but just make sure that they're, they would stack well. Okay, so here you just wanna go a few pages in and pull off the covers. So we're going to do the front and the back, just pulling them off and getting them ready to paint. Okay, so we're just gonna be using this white acrylic paint from Hobby Lobby and a chip brush. And we'll be just putting one layer of paint on at this point. And you also want to make sure that you don't get any paint on the sides because that will possibly be showing when you display your books. So just one layer of paint for right now. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and continue painting our books. And once we get on the first layer, we're going to let the books dry. If you're impatient like me, then you can use a blow dryer to get that done. And or I used our beautiful little fireplace there to help me dry the books. I just turned them around and the heat helped dry them quickly. Um, and once they're all done and painted with your first and second layer, that should be good. And then we'll move on to putting on our wording. Okay, so here I'm just quickly showing you that I already wrote my wording. You can either freehand it with just a pencil or you can find the style that you want on the computer and print it off and then use carbon paper to trace it onto your books that way. To do this, I believe I got these at Hobby Lobby, but they have a pretty fat tip on them. So I don't really want to use that because um, I'm nervous it'll just all bleed together. So I'm going to try just using a permanent marker. I have two different kinds, a big and a Sharpie. So we're going to see which one works best. I guess I just need to find me some paint pens that aren't, that have a fine tip. Here I am realizing that the big permanent marker does not work well at all. I don't even know where it came from. I just found it in our drawer 
We do have tons of just regular permanent markers. Um, so that's what I ended up using on the last two books. On this first book, I actually end up going with the paint pen because I thought it looked better with the shorter, um, shorter written words. The words on the next two books, there's more of them, so they're a little closer together. And the one in the middle is also in cursive. So I just thought it looked better with the permanent marker. Alrighty. Here I have my twine. I get this from pretty much anywhere. Dollar Tree, Dollar General, Hobby Lobby. Um, a lot of places carry it. So... We're just going to wrap it around these books a few times. I'm not sure exactly how many times I did it on these books, but just go until you get it to the point that you like. And then we're going to add some more pieces to it here in a second. I will show you. All right, so now we're just cutting off the ends of this twine, and then we're going to be adding some floral pieces to the top of it. I got these floral pieces from one of my thrift hauls at Goodwill. They were really pretty and I've enjoyed them using them on multiple of my thrift flips. So here I'm just taking a little piece of it and tying it on the top. And that literally is it. It's going to finish this piece off and it's going to be so stinking cute. I'm going to do with this bushel basket. Um, it is so stinking cute. I really, really love the detail in it. It's in very good shape and it's just a cute size. I'm not really doing much with this, but I will show you how I would decorate it. Um, so I found these flowers at, so the white ones are from Goodwill. The yellow ones, I found these at Dollar Tree and I just, again, thought that they were really cute um set of flowers and I thought that they looked really good together you could just lay them in here like this which is what I did originally and um but you want to cover up this bottom part um so I also have these carrots that I got from Hobby Lobby I got these last year at the anyway so you could just put these at the end and use that as your cover up and just have like a cute little spring um, Easter basket. Or um, I went and pulled some of my burlap and obviously I would cut this to fit, but you could just wrap the end of it with burlap. So just get your flowers to where they wanna be and wrap them with burlap. I'm just going to cut off a little bit here and then I'm just going to set those in like that and you can just kind of play around with it and make sure that your leaves are facing the direction that you want them to. If you wanted to go further you could even put maybe some ribbon on the end, leave it in there and you could put more flowers if you want to but for the most part, I think that's just how I would do it. And then even adding in your carrots. <laughs> interesting but I'm so glad it's done and I had a lot of fun hanging out with you guys while I did this so thank you for watching the video and let me know in the comments which one you thought was your favorite I honestly don't have a favorite because I thought that they were all so stinking cute and if I'm reselling them it's going to be hard to get rid of them I'm gonna have to make some for myself 
so that I will have the cuteness in my house as well. But the cuteness is here until they are gone. So again, thank you guys for hanging out with me. Comment below with which one you thought was your favorite. And if you would like and you like what you see, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. It definitely helps me out. All right, see you guys on the next video. Bye.